In this section, we'll be talking about absolute value inequality. So we're going to be combining what we talked about with absolute value equations and combine them with an inequality, which makes them even more exciting. But before we throw in some absolute value into the mix, we just need to talk about what inequalities are and how to work with these. So the first type of inequalities we're going to talk about are compound inequalities, which all that means is you're working with more than one inequality at a time. And the first one we're going to be talking about is the AND inequality. Now an AND inequality, this is when the inequalities will intersect. So when you graph this, both arrows will eventually intersect or the arrows will crash into one another. So in our first case, we have one arrow headed this way, which if you note, we have a closed bubble on this one. So this will be an equal to equation, if you remember from when we worked with this with piecewise function. And then we'll have another arrow, and if you notice, they're traveling in, in opposite directions, and there is a little overlap. Their overlap is right here. So any inequalities, one car goes one way, the other car goes the other way, and this is the crash zone. They will crash into one another, unfortunately. So your final answer when you graph it on any inequality on a number line, it will be the portion that is in between, so where the two arrows intersect. So this portion where the two arrows collided is where your final answer will be when you have an AND inequality. And remember, this is going to be an equal to since both of these are closed bubbles. And the reason why we set it up like this, so AND inequalities will always look like this. Your number on the left hand side will go first, your number on the right hand side will go last. And these inequalities must always face the same direction. You can't have one going the other way. Now the reason why it looks like this, these are the values where the portion in between is greater than A. So on a number line, these are the numbers that are larger than A, but they are also the numbers that are less than B. So these numbers are smaller than B. So remember, this is greater than A, less than B, and they're both equal to because they're both closed bubbles. So this is what your answer would kind of look like for an AND inequality. Now, the same thing is going to happen when you have an inequality where it's not equal to. So you have one arrow going this way, and if you notice, the bubble is now open. So this means our inequality will be similar, just instead of an equal to, it will not contain the little line underneath the inequalities. So you have one arrow traveling this way, another arrow traveling this way, and if you notice, they will collide. This is the collide zone. Fortunately, they into a tragic car crash, and this is where they collide right here. So our final answer will be where the two arrows collide, from A to B. And again, like before, these are the values larger than A, and less than B. And since these are open bubbles, not closed, we do not write the line underneath it. So these are all the values where X is larger than A and less than B. And remember, these inequalities must face the same direction. Don't ever try to write them in different directions. Now, a second type of compound inequality we're going to talk about is the OR inequality. Now, the OR inequality, we do have arrows that are still traveling in opposite directions like before, but this time the cars will not crash. They will not intersect. So we have one car going this way or one arrow traveling that way. Another car going the other way or arrow traveling that way. And if you notice, the cars don't crash. Awesome. So with an OR, your arrows will not intersect. And I think they kind of look like bird wings can picture a bird kind of flapping right here. This is our, These are both of its wings, I guess, if that helps you to remember. So your final answer for an OR inequality would be the values over here, which these are the values smaller than A, or these are the values that are larger than B. So for the OR inequality, we are actually going to write OR in between. Okay, we break them apart, not like with the N where we write it all together. And remember, since these are not open bubble, they are closed bubble, we include the equal to symbol. So these are all the values less than or equal to A or greater than or equal to B. Same thing if you have not equal to, so you have the open bubble. One car goes this way, the other car goes this way, and holy hot dog, they do not intersect, which means it's an or. Okay, so we have our little bird wing, so it's an or. So these are all the values less than A or larger than B, and since we have open bubbles this time, they are not equal to.
So be on the lookout for both cases. You got your or case where they don't intersect and your and case where they do collide. So be on the lookout. So we are going to be watching each of these examples in just a moment. So click the pause on this video and we'll watch example one and example two on how to determine if these are and or if they are or inequalities when we get done. So now the next examples we're going to be talking about, these will be later on in the week. They are funsies, so look forward to those later. Now our next one, these are actually example three and four in your notes, not one and two, so just make that correction. But these are going to be moving on to absolute value inequalities. So now we are combining everything that we've been talking about in this section and your previous section. We're going to be combining how we solved absolute value equations as well as with the inequalities thrown in the mix, which makes it even more exciting. So go ahead and pause this video and you'll be working out example three and four in your handy day notebook. All right, we are now moving on to our final case of absolute value inequalities, which if you were in class, we did kind of talk about this scenario. So in this one, I asked you guys, what are the values that you could place inside of absolute value to make this true? So if we think about it, remember absolute value turns everything positive. So no matter what we put in for X here, it will be positive. So if we have only positive numbers that are produced on this side of our inequality, it will always be larger than a negative value. So this first case, if you ever see absolute value is larger than a negative number, that is going to be called all real numbers because no matter what you put in for x, all the answers will be larger than negative 5. Now the second scenario, if you ever have x is less than 0, Okay, in that scenario, whatever I put in for x, remember absolute value turns things positive. Okay, so if I have positive numbers excluding 0, okay, no matter what I put in here, this will never work out because we only have a positive number. So this case is called no solution. Nothing's going to work for this case. So we did talk about this in class. All right, so to recap, remember anything greater than a negative in absolute value, everything will work. So we call this all real numbers. And then the second case, when we have absolute value is less than a zero, or it could also be true for less than a negative, if you have anything but zero that goes in here, we call it no solution because it never works. Nothing will ever, ever work for whatever you put into X. So these are your two cases for um, when you have absolute value and you have greater than a negative or less than a zero or less than a negative. These are some special cases. So now, whoops. Now, sorry about that. <laughs> now we're going to be solving two lovely problems. This will be example five and six. Again, ignore these numbers. There'll be five and six that you'll be working out in your handy day notebook to determine if they are real numbers, all real numbers, or if your answer will be a no solution. So go ahead and pause this video and go ahead and work out these two examples.